also this is the decoy uncaged so the bike is limited edition according to yt it will be sold in strictly limited quantities like a few of their other models in the range and they do look really good i've got to say the uncaged models it's like they're hand picking some of the components to build these limited edition models and this is a sweet looking bike the frame is the same as the standard decoy frame that's been out for a little while now but it's got a carbon front triangle and a aluminium rear triangle MX wheel set, 29er at the front, 27.5 at the rear, a 540 watt battery that is custom made for YT and that forms part of the underside of the bike but for now it's a 540. Now YT there's been talk about a bigger battery coming out for a very very long time so hopefully we'll see something at some point in the future. But looking closely at the frame, the build quality from my eyes seems really nice, really good build quality. All the cable runs are nice inside, looks really, really well designed, really compact. There's no stray cables running all over the place. Just looks like a very well constructed frame and a very well built bike. Interestingly, on this model, it's got the aluminium uh, rear triangle. So it's not full carbon. Doesn't really bother me at all, but just something to note, it's not a full carbon. So let's talk about the geometry and the frame design. Now, I was at the launch of the decoy when it came out a few years ago now, it must have been in 2019. And back then the geometry on an e-bike was really progressive. It was really long, slack, and it was kind of unique at the time. Um, but things have changed over the past few years. The geometry is still pretty good. It's an enduro spec, so 64 and a half degree head angle. The reach in XXL is 489 millimeters. So it's by no means the longest or the slackest e-bike that you can get at the moment. So the geometry is pretty contemporary. It's, it's not pushing any boundaries, but that doesn't matter because after a quick ride of this, they nailed it, didn't they? They really nailed the geometry of this bike. So whilst the geometry is not like the most revolutionary, in fact, it's the same frame from a few years ago, it's still really, really good. 64 and a half degree head angle, reach for comfortable for most people. Maybe the tallest of riders might prefer something a little bit longer, a little bit stable, but six foot three and it handles pretty well so far for me. Now, the thing I loved about the YT decoy when I rode it for the first time when it was released a few years ago was the way that the rear suspension felt, uh, the handling and the design and the geometry at the time. It's quite minimalist, it's quite clean looking. But with this rear suspension design and this coil, it's like the bike has been crying out for a coil shock for forever because it is so, so supple off the top. Now I've ridden quite a few bikes with coil shocks and my preference is a coil. I really like the grip that it gives and the feeling and the way it soaks up the bumps and carries over the terrain. I've got to say this is I think the most sensitive feeling rear end but because the progression on the bike ramps up nicely it is like a coil was designed to go on this bike or the bike was designed for a coil. They just work beautifully together. I've got this Olin's TTX 22M on another bike, so it's interesting to try it on this one. And this feels more sensitive off the top. The initial stroke is just beautiful. And because the stroke of the shock is, is longer, it uses a lighter weight spring. And I think that makes it feel even more sensitive and supple than some others I've tried. So I really love the way on a first ride, this is just the first ride that I've had on it, first couple of rides, that the bike feels. Now, that being said, I do need to spend a little bit more time on the Olin's RXF 38 fork because it's got two chambers in there. So you can actually have loads of adjustability, almost infinite adjustability in terms of the off the top plushness and the ramp up chamber to give you uh, bottom out protection. So the fork, you can just run the default settings, easy, set and forget, but if you really like to tinker, there's loads of stuff that you can do with that RXF 38 fork to get it feeling really sweet. Now, whilst we're talking about suspension, just one thing to note, the coil on the rear, they do give a different spring rate depending on the size, uh, but to change it on the Olins, it's a little bit more involved. You have to take the whole shock off, you have to remove um, the collars and you have to take off the rebound adjuster. Just something to remember. Once they're set up, they are pretty much set and forget. But if you need to experiment with spring rates, if you're a lighter rider or a heavier rider, just something to note, you might need to spend a little bit more money on a different coil. For reference, I'm 85 kilos and I'm running the 454 pound coil from Olin's on this bike and it works pretty well. 
I might be tempted to try a slightly heavier spring rate as well and see how I get on. But on a first quick ride, it feels really sweet so far. Now I am gonna bring out a full video on this bike. So if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed. So a few more details about the bike. We've got a mullet set up. So 29er on the front and 27.5 on the rear. It's running a DHR2 out on the rear in 2.6 and an Asagai in uh, 2.5. Tires are fairly lightweight for the type of bike that YT are marketing this as. It's, uh, you know, marketed as a pretty hard hitting enduro bike and it's only got an XO casing at the front. That's the lightest and thinnest casing that Maxxis uh, do for this tire and an XO plus at the back. Now, that's okay, but if you are hitting some rocky, harder, more gnarly terrain, maybe you want something with a bit more of a beefier sidewall to give you that extra support if you want to run lower pressures. For a lot of riders and a lot of locations, it will be fine, but maybe it would have been nicer to see a double down at the rear and an XO plus. So just one step up on the tires. That's what I would have liked to have seen spec there. It does bring the weight up a little bit, but this is not a lightweight bike. So weighing it without pedals comes in just under 24 kilos in size XXL. So adding slightly heavier tires may have pushed it over 24. Maybe YT wanted to mark it as under 24 kilos. Who knows, but it is not a light bike, but it feels pretty light to ride. I'm personally, I don't have that many issues with bikes that are 24 kilos. I, it doesn't bother me. I know some people get really caught up on weight, but yeah, 24 kilo e-bikes, it's pretty standard for an enduro bike. So the battery is YT's custom designed 540 watt hour battery. And I know a lot of people will be looking for bikes with batteries like 630, 750, seems to be the new kind of standard on a lot of bikes that are coming out in 2022. So if you're riding with people with massive batteries, you might not be able to ride with them all day with a 540 watt hour battery. Hopefully that will change at some point soon. Shimano EP8 motor nicely integrated into the frame, nice neat cockpit with a small E7000 controllers, little uh, black and white display that YT specifically chose because they prefer the aesthetics of it. It doesn't distract you when you're riding too much. And I've got to say the build on the bike, like all of the cable organization it's quite neat and quite minimalist and it just looks like they've really thought about the build and putting it together and the aesthetics. Some bikes arrive with just cables all over the place, but the bike shipped direct from YT just looks like it's been well built, well designed and well put together and well assembled. The bolts that I took out for the shock there were nicely greased and gave me confidence that the build of the bike was really decent. So the bike is designed to be a really capable enduro electric mountain bike, 170 mil fork with 165 rear wheel travel. So I'm really looking forward to trying out this fork and getting to know it, the Olin's RXF 38 with 170 travel and paired nicely with the rear at 165. There are some parts on the bike that I've never used before. I've never used any Crank Brothers wheels. So these are the Crank Brothers synthesis e-bike wheels, slightly thicker inside and in a width for 31.5 mil. So yeah, interesting. Drivetrain is Shimano. It's got the Shimano XT drivetrain. So XT crank set, cassette, rear derailleur and uh, shifter. And the XT drivetrain, I am a massive fan of. The shifting is crisp and it works and it's smooth. XT shifting is so crisp especially under load on an e-bike, the XT drivetrain just seems to be the smoothest, quietest and most crisp shift that I've experienced on an e-bike. Now, interestingly, it's running SRAM code R brakes. So XT drivetrain with SRAM brakes could be down to availability. Maybe it's an ease of use thing for people that are setting the bike up if it's been shipped to the UK or France. People run the brakes different ways around and you can just swap these over. And the Shimano's you can't flip quite as easy. You have to take the uh, the hoses out. Sometimes you need to bleed them as well. So it could be that, but it's running SRAM code R brakes. And we've got a Renthal cockpit out the front, Renthal bars and Renthal stem. Now I do find those Renthal bars quite flat. There's not a lot of back sweep on those bars. So I'm definitely gonna need to play around with the bar height 
and the bar position to get enough kind of feeling back. I've been using more back sweat bars personally, and I think they're a little bit more comfortable. And for me, I think I prefer the steering input and feel with more of a back sweep. So I'm gonna have to play around with these Renthal bars to get the right feel. Now the frame is this kind of deep purple color. It's quite difficult in this studio lighting to make it really pop. But when you're outside in the right light, where you get some sunlight, firing on it actually really does pop and with the purple frame and that gold accent with the fork and the shock actually really does look like a sweet premium e-bike one of the things that i think yt do really well is when you get the bike you get this box and in it is like a tray system tools technical manual so a little toolbox shock pump allen key for your pedals little torque wrench carbon paste stickers it's just just nicely presented and it's good to see that rather than just everything chucked in at the bottom so that's it for now subscribe if you want to be the first to see a full ride review video on this coming real soon and thanks for watching and i'll catch you all soon